Welcome to BYOB. Now is the time to build your own business and push your brand forward. Join us each week for fresh, innovative strategies to bring your brand and business to new heights. Call in at 888-994-4995, Studio B. Now let's get to the show. Hi, everybody. My name is Brooke Schnittman, CEO and founder of Coaching with Brooke. We help individuals with ADHD finally meet their potential by providing them the tools and accountability to lead empowered lives. I started my business in 2018 after working in the special education industry for 12 years. I graduated from NYU in 2006 with a master's in students with disabilities and was a special education teacher for seven years and an assistant director of special education for four years in New York. Came to Florida, received coaching, finally met my goals and actions in big projects and followed through for the first time. And uh, then I was like, you know what, this coaching thing really works. So I took my specialty of ADHD and coaching, combined the two and became an ADHD coach. Of course, got certifications in ADHD coaching, life coaching and parent coaching, and now have worked with thousands of individuals with ADHD. Brought on a team of seven coaches that specialize in all different areas of ADHD, adult, children, parent, addiction, bringing on a, a nutritional coach as well. We wanna make sure that we help you in all areas of your ADHD. And I'm um, just so glad that I'm here to share with you all of the amazing things that ADHD coaching can help you with. So uh, people ask, what is ADHD? What is ADHD coaching? How is it different than therapy? How is it different than tutoring? So I understand uh, therapy has been used and is continued to be used with individuals uh, with ADHD and I think it's amazing and there's a time and place for it. It talks about uh, the past and how um, and why things are happening for you and happening to you the way that they are, really discovering the why. In coaching, we help you propel you forward into creating actions and goals and accountability in your life, in any situation in your life. So if you're an adult at work and you're not meeting deadlines and perhaps um, your boss is talking to you about creating strategies to get your work done, we've helped entrepreneurs, professionals, CEOs, before we've helped students who are transitioning from high school to college and um, are finally on their own for the first time they don't they no longer have their teachers and the structure and their parents to work as their executive functions and now they need to create structure and habits on their own we've worked with eight-year-olds who uh, just need to learn more about organization in school and at home study skills long-term projects you know, testing is new to them. So understanding that transitions, high school students, so the whole gamut of individuals with ADHD or suspected ADHD. And ADHD can really present itself differently, even if you have the same ADHD diagnosis as someone else. So there's three ADHD diagnoses. ADHD is the umbrella term. Um, and there's ADHD hyperactive impulsive, ADHD inattentive, which is formerly known as ADD and ADHD combined type, which is what I have. Um, so regardless of what diagnosis you have, it can present differently at different times. So we really work with the person, how they're showing up and you know, work with their strengths to get to them to where they wanna be. So it is the summer and I know that many of you out there are transitioning back to work, school, um, transitioning your high school, child off to college or to a job so you're probably thinking oh how do I do that I um, you know been on vacation for so long or you know how do I launch my child out of the nest for the first time so I'm here to give you some practical solutions and strategies that we've been helping individuals just like you who are listening in to launch your child out of the nest, to get back to work, to get back to school. So maybe I start with the youngest uh, age group, which is uh, the children. So you are now going back to school in Florida. We're going back to school in a little over a week, which is wild. Um, <clears throat> and 
you have a new teacher most likely, you have new materials, potentially new students in your class, and that's a huge transition. For individuals with ADHD, transitions can be really tough. So what worked for you last year might not work for you again this year. So how do you set yourself up for success going back to school with all of these new things? So I would, if I were you as a parent and the child, get the course um, materials from the teacher. Typically speaking, either online or by email, the teacher will send you the materials necessary to get started uh, for school. So get those materials together before school starts so you feel comfortable being prepared and starting on the right foot. For individuals with ADHD, very often we're visual people. So having color-coded notebooks, folders, binders that all correlate to the same subject. So perhaps math is red, English is purple, uh, science is blue, math is green. Having everything aligned in the same color, so this way it's easy for you to find when you're at school or in your locker or in your cubby or in your backpack, and you can quickly identify what subject it's for. Because what happens is if we can't identify the correct folder or notebook or whatever supply we need, we end up using whatever we have, and then that leads to us not being able to find when we need to the right notes, the right worksheets. And then we get disorganized, we get frustrated, we get upset, we miss assignments, we miss materials, our grades drop, um, we feel like we're stressed in school, we may not be able to listen to the teacher because we're looking for the correct materials. So it's really important to make sure that you are on the right track before school starts and you have the right materials for you. Also have a homework folder that might be a different color, let's say orange, and on one side have the to-dos, so the things that you need to bring home and bring all of your worksheets in there, all of your homework in there, and then on the other side to turn in so you know what you have to bring into your teacher. Have some sort of planner, whether it be a digital planner on a calendar such as Google or using even the school agenda book. I love being able to write my homework down. Even I know nowadays everything is online and usually the teacher is using Canvas or Google Classroom, but taking that homework from there and writing it down really helps with the working memory and being able to cross off the things as they are getting done and being able to track long-term assignments and projects that can be super helpful. For the older students, kids going to high school, kids going to college, check out the assignments that are being assigned. So in college, I know there's a syllabus week, so you'll be able to see what are the big projects and long-term to-dos that you need to do. Set up your calendar and reverse engineer it. So this is the due date, whether it be October, November, September, and work backwards with that due date. Okay, I know I have this book report coming up and it's due September 30th. What are the things that I need to do to finally submit that book report on time and be ready for it? So perhaps in my calendar a month prior, I say, okay, start looking at step one of the book report, read 10 pages next week, read another 10 pages and so on. So you can really get to that final project because things are gonna start happening. You're gonna have small um, everyday assignments and studying and those bigger projects and to-dos sometimes get lost and crammed and then we get frustrated and stressed and we don't reach our potential. Um, for high school students, you might have a different organizational system. You may or may not use your locker. You might be you know, schlepping all of your things back and forth or using a computer or a Chromebook to be able to get your materials back and forth. So figure out what systems work for you. Make sure that you're familiar uh, where all your classes are and make sure that you're in a location in the classroom that's gonna help you stay focused. Perhaps you stay more focused in the front of the classroom where the teacher's right there and you hear their voice. Perhaps 
by the door where there's less distractions, by the window in the back of the classroom so you can move up. Let's get us ourselves started on the right foot so this way it's easier to get on the um, success track right away. For professionals with ADHD, summertime is typically slow for professionals, especially in the month of July. You see a lot of people traveling, a lot of people taking vacations, people going to the beach, enjoying the summer weather. It is hard to get back into your habits and routines after being on vacation for a while or your boss being away or your colleagues being away. So ease your way back into it. Know what is gonna work for you. If you have a morning routine that you can bite your teeth in and say, okay, I am going to wake up in the morning and I'm gonna have some water, I am going to take some deep breaths, exercise, read a, read a couple of pages of something interesting, whatever it is that, you, that works for you, um, get back into those small bite-size routines again so this way you can start to feel in control of yourself and your day and that carries over for the rest of your day. So, I know that was a really quick synopsis of uh, some tools that we can use going back to work, going back to school. Um, here at Coaching with Brooke, we have one-on-one -on -one and group coaching services. So we have helped thousands of individuals with ADHD get over the hump, get over transitions, meet their potential. Uh, with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's the coach and the client working hand-in-hand -hand as a team, helping you achieve your goals and actions, breaking them down, helping you understand your ADHD strengths, your ADHD weaknesses, so you can meet your goals. In a group, you get the support of other people who also uh, struggle and have found success with their ADHD so you don't feel alone. And you get the accountability and the support as well. So we have you know, monthly groups, we have weekly groups, we have one-on-one -on -one weekly coaching, we have our signature process, 3C Activation, that I discovered three years ago and use and implement into all of our coaching with our clients so um, feel free to reach out at any time if you want any free tips you can always go to our instagram page coaching with brooke our website coaching with brooke and there's a ton of freebies adhd manuals how to focus weekly newsletters and tips that are digestible and bite-sized that can help you understand tips to overcome your adhd symptoms So I have a question. I suffer from ADHD. And um, the things that you were talking about for school, I actually do most of those things. I color coded most of my um, things for school, meaning like, okay, this is gonna be for a reading class. It's gonna be for math classes. So I ha before I even got tested, I, I did that beforehand. Mm -hmm. So when I got tested and you're saying this now, it all makes sense to me why I used to do this it just made it easier for me okay I know this is for this class I know this right. is for this class but um, coming into it coming to know and coming to the realization that I have it now is it's been I don't know it's been a journey and it's something that I'm working with and now I'm understanding why I do things a certain way mm -hmm. so I don't think as it as a bad thing but mm -hmm. as a thing as okay, I'm coming to terms with it, I'm getting help that I need, and yeah. it's okay to ask for help. And I'm learning that it's okay to ask for help. Absolutely, and I love how you say it's a journey. It's a journey at any point of your life. Oh yeah. Because so life changes It all does, the time. it does, it does change a lot. So when I got tested and I got my results, I was feeling a bit down and I, I was feeling a lot of anxiety and like, you know, depression. But when I came to terms with that, I was like, this is why I do these things. And mm -hmm. now I'm understanding, oh, this is why I like things a certain way. This is why yes. <laughs> I um, do things in a particular way. And people are like, this is, why are you doing it like this? And I'm like, this is why, this is how I do things. I'm sorry, this is. That's what makes you feel comfortable and in control of your ADHD. Exactly, so I'm like, I'm coming to terms with it. I'm coming, to, I'm going to get the help I need. And it's just, it's a journey. And I'm happy that I'm doing this journey now 
instead of later on in my yeah. life. Well, congratulations on your diagnosis. Um, it really can change the way that you see your whole life and w make sense finally on why you're doing things. And I know you mentioned that. And as far as structure and routine goes, ADHDers hate structure but thrive on it at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah, so for my schooling, I actually um, get to pick my own schedule. Oh, so wonderful. So I get to pick my own teachers. So what I oh, do, wonderful. if I like this teacher a lot and, you know, this teacher knows me well, I'm going to keep taking the teacher with Absolutely. a different subject. So that's what I've been doing for most of my college. I've made sure I had the same teachers so I wouldn't feel uncomfortable and getting to know another teacher, but I sometimes just, you know, okay, maybe I just need a new person. Yeah. And then I'll try someone different. Yeah. Well, I love that too. I thought you were going to say that because you pick your own classes, you can choose what time of day it is too. I because, do that too. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know that some individuals have a hard time getting up in the morning yeah. and um, we have to be realistic and kind to ourselves. And if we are unrealistic and we try to schedule an 8 a.m. class and we are not early risers well we're doomed right <laughs> yeah i made sure i like most of my classes are pretty late mm -hmm. i only have one morning class which is 9 30 to 12 which i've taken before so i'm okay with that yeah but um, my other classes are in the evening time and i have time to do other things and homework so i'm pretty kind of excited for this semester so because i know most of my teachers <laughs> that's wonderful and they understand your strengths your weaknesses and yeah. you trust them and feel comfortable i think that that's a huge thing too when you don't trust you don't know you don't, you're not intimately connected with your teacher sometimes it's hard to listen even forget the whole focusing on the things that aren't um I guess interesting to us, but if you don't vibe with your teacher, that's just another level of um, toughness. Oh yeah, I make sure I introduce myself. I'm like, hey, hello, my name is Brianna Moore. I have this and this. If I like come off some way, like a certain way, or my papers aren't up to par, please let me know because I do proofread them, but like my proofread is not the same as you know everyone else's. So mm -hmm. I will have to proofread three times as more as a normal person. Yeah, and then being re being realistic with how many classes you take. So yeah, I've I took in um I did over my limit. I did I think five or I think I did five classes. Or okay. Five or six, I don't remember, but um it was an internship, so it didn't it was kind of easy. So okay. it was like six, but um I did take that many classes and it was very overwhelming. So especially I, if you have to read something three times. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, so I was supposed to take five classes this semester but i decided not to because i just didn't want to go through that again yeah and it was just it was a lot it was a lot to handle but i got through it got through it i tried my best <laughs> and everyone gets through things at different times some adhders like to be over scheduled because it gives them um, that urgency to get things done and then others you know, it might take, as you mentioned, three three times the time to read it and process it. You might not be understanding it in class, so you have to go back and reteach yourself the material and then start mm -hmm. studying and doing. I actually homework. got these couple um, apps to help me if anyone is interested. Um, I use Grammarly a lot when I do my papers. Yes. And for me to read my papers back to me, so I know it makes sense, I use this op this app called Speechify. Mm -hmm. and basically it's wonderful. It, you take a picture of something and it reads it to you to make sure you understand it. Or I will scan my papers so I know that it makes sense or I understand it and my teacher can understand it. Yes. So I always have like these extra apps and extra help to assist me so I know I'm doing the correct work. Yeah, whatever works, right? It's leveling the playing field so you feel confident in your abilities and yourself. And what I love about Speechify is you don't need to, you know, in the past growing up in school, you had to have the accommodation of books on tape. Yeah. Or uh, they don't even make that they anymore. Make that books anymore. on CD, they don't make that anymore either. Okay, audiobooks, fine. But then what happens when you have a worksheet or you have um, something online? you need an app like speechify that can mm -hmm. read it back to you and anyone it's a can very use it. helpful app like there was some times where i really didn't like me reading it it didn't really i didn't understand it mm -hmm. so with the app taking a picture of it mm. it letting it read to me and i follow along yes i understand 
and I'm like, okay, I get it. I can write my paper now. Yeah, and that's helpful for you because of the dyslexia that you mentioned too. Mm -hmm. um, many individuals with ADHD have dyslexia as well. My um, two stepsons have ADHD, and they, the younger one, uses Speechify or books from YouTube, and yeah. then reads at the same time, and he gets through books so much faster than if he was to try to read it without the audio yeah. and he actually comprehends it too yeah that's why i like about like having those resources and those apps i didn't know about it there was this commercial i saw on youtube and i was like hmm <laughs> let me try this <laughs> so when i found it i never like i never gave it away i never like yeah they market themselves pretty well <laughs> yeah there's like oh do you have dyslexia and i'm like Yes, 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 yes. You know? check, check, check. <laughs> so I was so happy when I found that app. And Grammarly just helps with my paper. I even got the membership so mm -hmm. I can... Um, Unlimited. It, yes, so it can um, go through my grammar. It can go through my punctuations. It can go through, oh, changing up my words to make oh it sound my better. Gosh. And I'm like, wow. I hated English growing up because, me, like you, I had a reading disability. I it was the fluency and the comprehension and um, I needed more time to process things and I remember that translated into my writing too and the oh, teachers yeah. would mark my paper and say uh, you should have done this you should have done that but I never or this is wrong this is wrong mark this but it never made me learn what I should be doing differently next time. Mm -hmm. So I love that you're using Grammarly and it's on the spot showing you how to alter your grammar, alter your spelling in order to write papers that are level the playing field and you'll learn from that too. Oh yeah, like uh, I remember I turned in a paper and it was not up to par and my teacher actually gave it back to me. He said, hey, I think you should look this over because he knew that I had dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think he was like, I think you should go look this over. And I was like, oh, what's wrong with that? I thought it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm reading it over again. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Thanks. No, I, so he yeah. gave me another chance in writing over my paper, which I'm so thankful for, and then I got like a B on that paper. That's the wonderful thing about using computers if you have dyslexia, that um, it will spell check it, or if you're using Grammarly, it will autocorrect it. Um, you know, back in the day, I knew before computers, believe it or not, the, the trick of script for dyslexic people to write in script and you're less likely to reverse your letters hmm. interesting hack right but they're not really teaching scripts nowadays no you can no. i mean the only time you really need to write in script is for your signature and you could write whatever you want yeah no you like, oh, <laughs> do a star <laughs> to a line it really doesn't matter but when i used to have like papers that i had to write in like classes class mm -hmm. settings and i couldn't use my phone uh, my professor gave me a dictionary to find what I needed. Oh. So I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> now it's just adding a bunch more time onto yeah. the, and creating that anxiety. I also, if you are okay with it, I wanna highlight the fact that you thought you were struggling with anxiety and depression, but then you know, in your 20s, you found out that you had ADHD, and that's so common for women because with um, an ADHD diagnosis, typically you think of the boy in the classroom who's getting out of their seat so often, mm -hmm. and you're not thinking of the female in the classroom who is looking and masking like they're paying attention and they're nodding their head, but they have no idea what the teacher's saying. And so because of the lack of knowledge back in the day, many women were going undiagnosed, and you know, once you get to college or in your career, then you're finally realizing there's something different and there's a reason for it. But women with ADHD very often are diagnosed with anxiety and depression first because they're not managing their ADHD symptoms mm -hmm. and they don't know how to. And then they realize, okay, maybe it's just a symptom of my ADHD that's not being managed or it could be coexisting. Yeah, that's what um, they, well, the per people that tested me, they, um, um, tested me for, well, my results were ADHD, ADD, um, anxiety, depression, and dyslexia. And they wanted me to seek help for my anxiety and depression. And I'm like, okay. And they were like, um, well, for your other symptoms and problems, you would have to, you know, ask your 
college, go to student services, which I have a meeting tomorrow, to make sure I get my accommodations I need mm -hmm. for my semesters that I have. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, so all this time, I've been like <laughs> having these outbursts. And then it was not what I thought it was. Yeah. So I'm happy that I got that test done. And it just makes everything so clear and better in a bit. So I understand what I'm going through is not this, but something else. Yeah, it's like putting glasses on for the first time when you have trouble seeing uh, things clearly. Yeah. I remember the first time I had glasses and I looked at the leaves on a tree and I'm like, whoa, this is what it's supposed to look like? So <laughs> defined? That's literally how I felt when I got my ADHD diagnosis too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that I got that test done. Um, at first I was a bit nervous because I really don't like tests. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I'm going into this and they're going to they're gonna tell me to take this test. I'm, I'm like, I'm already having anxiety about the test. Yeah. And I don't like tests. So I'm right. just like, oh my gosh. And it's, it's four hours. So I'm sitting in there. So you did a neuropsychological evaluation? Yes. Okay. So I did it. And I had to cut it for two days because I couldn't stay mm -hmm. in the home for four yeah. hours. But um, she was like, I feel like you're very tense. And I'm like, well, I got lost. <laughs> I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. So the test was fine. It just made me feel like, okay, this is what you have. And you're going to get help. And then it's okay. It's wonderful. So I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about it now. Yeah, At first I was like, you know, kind of down about it. Like, oh wow what's going on like I've done that, all this work and I feel like I was just going down again but I'm seeing it as not just something going down but just a journey that I have to go through sure sure so if you're listening in and you think it, you might have ADHD um, you know you can take some informal evaluations online ARSR for adults with ADHD and the Vanderbilt for children but the best source to have a true diagnosis is through a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a trained medical profession who, professional who can diagnose you with ADHD and then give you a thorough explanation of your strengths and your weaknesses. Uh, and then there are different tools that can help you, such as the ADHD coaching that I described, therapy for understanding a little bit more about your past, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and D DBT are um, ways of training your brain and rethinking about your thoughts. Uh, there is a lot of different help out there, but um, knowing that you're around people that you trust and understand ADHD is huge. Just having a community of like-minded people is really helpful. So if you don't have you know, the finances or you don't have the interest in um, you know, paying for coaching services or therapy, there are support groups out there um, like ADDA, you can read on Attitude Magazine, Chad, you can subscribe to our website, coachingwithbrook.com, and every week we'll send you updates about different symptoms of ADHD and tools to conquer it. You can follow us on Instagram, Coaching with Brooke. Uh, so there's many different supports out there. Some are paid, some are not, but uh, you are not alone if you have ADHD. Thank you for tuning in to BYOB. Join us next time for a fresh perspective and innovative strategies to building your own business. If you are a successful business owner with tips to help or would like more information from our hosts or guests, please contact us at 866-224-5422. See you next time.